since we have now looked at the design of reflector and reflect, refractor telescopes, let's look now at the pros and cons of the two styles. So when we uh, look at our two pictures here, one of the things you'll quickly notice is size. Reflectors uh, can have a very large aperture without any problems and that is because you have a mirror in the back and you're supporting the mirror from behind and so no matter how big you make that mirror you just put in more and more support. The largest single mirror has an aperture of approximately 30 feet across. Refractors are limited with a fairly small aperture. And in fact, uh, the largest refractor is 3 feet across. So that's 10 times different. And we can actually make even bigger reflectors using multiple mirrors where the size gets uh, up to 100 feet across, I think, is the biggest one currently. The reason why a refractor is limited is because your lens is being held on the sides. And so as the lens gets bigger, the weight of the lens itself is going to distort the shape since it's only being supported around the edges. Now aperture has a number of effects. We've already seen that this is going to uh, affect your magnification. So our large aperture is going to be able to get higher magnification, ultimately, effectively. Our small aperture is going to uh, be limited in our maximum magnification. But actually, even more importantly, your aperture determines how much light you can gather. The bigger the aperture, the more light. So a larger aperture is going to be able to see faint objects and more detail. Whereas our smaller aperture, we're limited to bright objects. So that is one uh, comparison, the aperture size. So in terms of aperture, our reflector wins. Another uh, consideration is cost. Turns out reflectors are cheap. Now cheap is relative, but a 6 inch aperture reflector, Newtonian design, you're going to be looking at something in the range of three to four hundred dollars. which, you know, or let's say $500. In the realm of things, fairly cheap, especially when you compare that to a refractor. Now, part of this depends upon quality. Yes, you can get cheap refractors. I wouldn't waste my money on one. Uh, you're not going to be able to see much of anything in one of those. Good refractors, uh, figure about a power of 10 higher again, about $3,000 to $5,000 for a refractor with a much smaller aperture. So, in terms of aperture and in terms of price, reflectors come out ahead. Let's see what else uh, we can compare. Another consideration is image quality. Now remember in our reflector design that these have a secondary mirror. 
And that secondary mirror is hanging in the middle of our telescope, which means it's going to block some of the light. That effect is going to show up in images that are not as sharp. So we'll call it slightly fuzzy images. Now there are ways of getting around that. And it depends on the size of the secondary and uh, a whole bunch of other things. But you are going to get a slight image degradation because of that secondary mirror. A refractor does not have a secondary mirror. So there is no uh, light blockage. And so that means that you are going to get sharp images. Now, because refractors are limited to bright objects, that's going to give us sharp images of bright objects. It's going to be good for planets. And star clusters, because stars clusters tend to be fairly bright. And when you're looking at a cluster of stars, you want to be able to see the individual stars. Now our reflector, because of the large aperture, because you're able to see things that are very faint, this is going to be good for faint objects. And typically, the faint objects are going to be what amateur astronomers sometimes call the faint fuzzies or the deep sky objects. So this is going to be things like nebulae, which are large clouds of gas and dust, and galaxies. And in both cases, they're very far away. Uh, they're kind of diffuse anyway. So being slightly fuzzy isn't really going to affect those images very much. So the ultimate question is, you know, which should you get? That comes down to what do you want to look at? How much money are you willing to spend? How big of a telescope do you really want? Do you want a monster telescope on wheels or something small and portable? So all of those things are a personal decision. Now, for professional astronomers, they use reflectors. And the main reason is because it's good for faint objects. So any kind of major telescope you ever hear about, including the Hubble Space Telescope, those are all reflecting telescopes. And almost all are exclusively the Newtonian style of reflectors. But for backyard astronomy, if you've got the money, go for a refractor if you want to look at planets. Or if you want to go for the faint fuzzies, go all out and get yourself a giant uh, Newtonian telescope. The choice is ultimately yours.